How you doing? I'm Matt Walden, Pro Drifter, and today we're here with Mishimoto and a 2008 Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution. Today we're going to be installing Mishimoto's silicone hose kit. Not only looks great, it's going to work great too. Come with me, let's check it out, I'll show you how to put these on. To install the Mishimoto hose kit on the 2008 Mitsubishi Evolution, you are going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, a pair of pliers, ratchet and extension, 10 millimeter socket, panel tool, coolant funnel, and coolant. Installation is about an hour and is a three out of five on a scale of difficulty. First step, make sure it's in park and or the parking brake is set and jack up the front end. Next up is to detach the negative terminal of the battery, which if you didn't notice, we're in the trunk right now. All right, first thing is to remove the lower panel from the car. A lot of these are pop clips, some are 10 millimeter head screws. Let's go ahead and get all of these undone. Here's the drain for the radiator. And before you open this, you wanna make sure that the car is cooled off completely. You don't want any pressure in the system, so make sure the car is completely cooled off, the battery terminal is disconnected, and open this guy up and drain the, drain the coolant out of her. All right, next step is to remove the U-pipe from the lower radiator connection using the squeeze clamps. Squeeze them together, slide them back, and you can remove that. And have your coolant pan ready because some residual will come out. Reinstall your clamps and install a Mishimoto hose onto the lower radiator connection. They do not make this easy. For the second half of the lower radiator hose, you're going to come in here and loosen this squeeze clamp up. and take that connection off. After you've removed these two screws, then remove the 10 millimeter bolt that holds the air box in place. After you take the two screws out, the one 10 millimeter over here, unstrap the air box and lift the whole assembly out of the way. Next step is to remove the rest of the air box and unplug the mass airflow sensor. Next step is to remove the hose clamp from the mass airflow sensor and intake tube so that we can remove this whole air box assembly. With that removed, everything is exposed on this side for the thermostat housing as well as the lower radiator hose. And you can finish removing the lower radiator hose by squeezing the clamp together on the top and sliding it off the hose. This is also the thermostat housing. All right, as you can see, when you put the Mishimoto hose next to the OE hose, their differences are obvious. Obviously, the Mishimoto one looks great and compared to the stock rubber one. Stock rubber one also only has one lining of reinforcements, where the Mishimoto has three around the outside edge here. Not only that, but it's silicone. This is gonna last a lot longer. So in order to make the installation a little bit easier, we're gonna transfer all the hose clamps over to the new hose and prepare it for installation. Don't forget to put the clamp on the lower hose underneath the car as well. After you've switched out the clamps on the lower hose, Remove the upper hose, same, same spring clamps on those. Just press these together, slide it back off of there. Just pull it right off. There you go, side by side comparison. Leave a clamp on there for the time being. Put the hose on.
reattach the second half of the upper radiator hose to the filler neck. There we go, put the intake back together, our hose kit install is complete. Reinstall the negative terminal of the battery. Once all the connections are made, good and tight, time to fill up the radiator. We recommend using 50% antifreeze, 50% distilled water. Your mix doesn't have to be perfect. The closer you get to perfect, the less chances of it freezing. For a little bit of extra cooling power, I recommend Liquid Chill by Mishimoto. This stuff works great. While you're filling up your radiator, make sure that there are no leaks coming out from underneath the car. Once you're positive that there are no leaks and everything's tight, go ahead and start up the car, turn the heat on high, and keep an eye on that temperature gauge while everything's bleeding out.